Welcome back to what has been an amazing adventure in Snowdonia National Park and other areas in North Wales. In today's episode, I'll be sharing with you the daily activities and sites that we saw across our one week trip in the area. I'm also going to share a My Google Maps where I've pinned the locations I visited and the overall budget for the trip. We'll dive right in with the daily activities and sites. After work on the Friday, we drove from London to Two Mills, a place that's between Chester and Liverpool. It meant that on the Saturday, we were able to spend a full day at the National Trust's Bodnant Gardens. We started with the Laburnum Arch, which was just days away from its peak, before making our way down the hillside, passing ponds, wandering along walkways, out onto the terraces to see the pin mill, and eventually making it into the valley. We started at the top near the skating pond and slowly made our way down past the poem, the waterfall bridge, and eventually into the Bodnant Dell with its old mill and blaze of colours from the rhododendrons and the other flowering plants. On the Sunday, we drove to the National Trust's car park in Averglaslin to complete a 5.7 mile circular walk. It started off magically with falling pollen that looked like snow and shortly after the trail led us down into a thundering gorge with turquoise waters. A little further on was the pretty town of Beth Gillette, and then further along country lanes we stopped for a packed lunch at the pretty Llindinas. We then began the climb in the afternoon up to an old mine and descended through Cumbachin along an old aerial ropeway. It was a highly varied walk despite it not being overly strenuous and one of the highlights of my trip. On the bank holiday Monday, we had an early start arriving at the National Trust's Ogwen Cottage just after 7am. Shortly after our arrival, the last of the parking spaces were gone. We set off to hike the Glidders, what would turn out to be our most physically challenging hike of the trip, but also our favourite day of the whole trip. The walk was very gentle to begin with, well paved and not much incline up to and around Llyn Edwal. It was a stunning lake with a mountainous backdrop. Once at the other end of the lake, things got more challenging with what would best be described as a scramble up Devil's Kitchen. The next challenge was the screw path that felt like for every three steps forward, I slid another one back and the boulder field that followed was surprisingly welcomed. It led us up to Glidervac, an impressive pile of rocks with Snowdon Mountain in the background. We kept wandering the trail which would come and go from our line of sight and after navigating yet another boulder field, we eventually made it to the cantilever stone on Glidavore. To get off the mountain, we took a slightly less direct route, but it afforded us stunning views of Travan and gave us the opportunity to see some of the wild mountain goats too. We passed another mountain lake, which some hikers took the opportunity to swim in and hike down the side of a pretty waterfall and finished with the reward of an ice cream. Tuesday was meant to be a more laid back day to help our muscles recover from the previous day's hike. We headed over to Anglesey where we started at the Menai Suspension Bridge viewpoint. Next, we drove across the island to Paris Mountain, an old copper mine with free to access public footpaths, allowing us to explore a small slice of the UK that felt a bit more akin to Iceland or Yellowstone. The next port of call was the old Porthwem Brickworks, a ruined site on the coast that was full of adventure seekers from fishermen to kayakers, paddlers and picnic goers. We made a quick pit stop at the South Stack Lighthouse at the very tip of the island. Whilst the lighthouse itself was closed, we were able to get a magnificent view of it from the cliff tops as we watched the thousands of seabirds clinging to the cliff faces as they landed to nest for spring. Our next stop was at Lanthwin with the hopes of making it onto the island peninsula to see the lighthouse. Caught off guard by just how long it would take to reach the lighthouse from the car park, we unintentionally timed our visit with the beautiful golden hour, getting some of my favourite photographs and footage from the whole trip. On our way back to the mainland, we stopped off at a town whose name I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce, but it just gave us a few minutes to get that must-have photograph beneath the sign. On the Wednesday, we drove a matter of minutes up the road from our Airbnb cottage to the top of Dinorwig and Vivian Slate quarries. We wandered out to the Llyn Padan and Llamberis viewpoint, spotted mountain goats, wandered amongst the quarrymen's cottages learning about their history, 
before stopping off in Llamberis for some traditional Welsh food for lunch. The afternoon's trail led us past the National Slate Museum, the Llamberis Lake Railway, and up through Vivian Quarry's terraces, back to the car, where we found a trip of goats being rather mischievous. Thursday was our worst weather day, so opted to hike Snowdon, Wales's highest mountain. We chose the Rydthu path as the Welsh Government claim it's the quietest path out of the main six up to the summit. True to what we'd read, the trail was lovely and quiet with just the odd party who we overtook or were overtaken by. Hiking through the thick cloud was easier than expected due to the very well-maintained footpath. And with no line of sight to the summit, when we actually reached the top, it arrived a lot more quickly than what we'd anticipated. The true summit, however, was a nasty shock, as despite the lack of views, hordes of others had chosen to hike the other routes, and then we had to stand in line to reach the summit marker. Not feeling anywhere near as exhausted as we did after hiking the Glidders, we decided to drive around to Abba Falls, a mighty, but pretty waterfall accessed on foot from a car park three kilometres or so away. Friday's weather forecast was set for the clouds to clear as the morning went on, so we headed to the tiny village of Croisor for the trailhead to climb Kinnicht. At less than half the distance of Snowdon, but with stunning views from the top, it was a mountain that really packed a punch. We started walking through fern-covered stone walls, trees and boulders, where the bluebells were dappled on the ground. It soon opened out to stunning views of the mountain that we were about to climb, when we were then treated to a handful of RAF planes flying by. The views behind us kept getting better, and with one final scramble to the top, we were a little surprised when we reached the peak. The icing on top of the cake was the gorgeous tea room next to the car park, where I rewarded myself with a well-earned hot Welsh cake. Our final day, Saturday, would also be spent driving back to London, so the activities for the day were to be rather chilled. We headed over to Betuza Coed, the capital of Snowdonia's National Park, with its train station and Sherpa bus connections to trailheads such as the Penna Pass. It's no the wonder why it's a buzzing little town full of shops and eateries. We took the relatively easy trail up to Llinalsi, a beautiful tree-lined lake with views reaching out over Snowdon. Lunch was to be had at an old 16th century coaching inn, and we attempted to walk off lunch by following the trail along the river in town up to the Miner's Bridge, only to then discover that a storm had washed it away a year or so before. Each of the locations that we visited have been added to a My Google Maps, which I've linked into the comments section below. I tried to add a photograph overview to each of the little pointers, as well as costs for things such as admission and car parking. As you can see from my spreadsheet, the overall budget for the week away came out of £495.69 per person. Over here I've got a breakdown of the accommodation total, which you can see quite clearly was my biggest expense at £322.70 per person. This was based on two people sharing. The fuel total was just shy of £50. The car parking costs just over £10 doing the supermarket shops so that we had food for things like breakfast, lunch, dinners and snacks came to just over £50 each. And then we also chose to eat out on a couple of occasions and that came out just over £60. As a breakdown for each of the days, you can see exactly what activity we took part in, where we stayed overnight, which for this particular trip was quite straightforward. There was only one different place of a Premier Inn on the first night and then you can see where we were having to actually spend money and what those costs were looking like. Overall, this came in pretty much bang on budget, but one thing that is probably worth my while pointing out is that North Wales does have a lot of other activities that you would pay for. So for example, taking a ride on one of the railways, going and taking part in things like zip lining. So because we enjoy hiking a lot, it meant that a lot of those activities were free after we'd paid for the car parking. If any of these locations and activities take your fancy, you might be interested in my 11 part North Wales travel vlog series. So click on the playlist to find out more.